Yes, everyone, how are we doing? We're back and welcome to the preview for Sheffield United against Manchester City. So, Sunday, 2 o'clock, Man City are away at Bramall Lane against Sheffield United in our third Premier League game of the season. We currently stand second place in the league just behind Brighton and goal difference at that match this early in the season anyway. We're one of only three Premier League teams that have won our opening two games. We are the only Premier League side to not concede a goal this season. Beautiful stuff and I want that to continue on Sunday. Now, look, Man City have a pretty decent record against Sheffield United. In our last five games against Sheffield United, we've won all five, conceding zero goals goals i'm telling you man it's this defense it runs deep you know this best defense in europe it runs deep man obviously last season in the fa cup we did actually play sheffield united in the semi-finals maris scored that beautiful hat trick what a guy as we all know unfortunately Riyad maris isn't at the club anymore but one man that came in place of Riyad maris is new signing jeremy doku what a player what a player he's going to be for city i'm so excited to see him the possibility of him playing tomorrow i do want to talk about pretty soon however for now all I want to say is, I want to see that man play some football. He looks good. He's excited. Here's an interesting stat for your Manchester City's first game at Main Road. We are City, Super City from Main Road. But man City's opening game at Main Road was actually against Sheffield United 100 years ago yesterday. We won 2-1. Is that a sign? Who knows? Obviously, Sheffield United are one of the newly promoted sides. We've not played them in the league in a couple of years. However, the last time we did play them, we did win. As I said, we won 1-0. Kyle Walker, ex-Sheffield United player, scored the goal. It's a beauty, a beauty. Of course, there were two young Manchester City players that helped Sheffield United get promoted back into the Premier League, Tommy Doyle and James McAtee. James McAtee being a player that I won't be too surprised to see get some action tomorrow. We've seen him on the bench a few times this season already. I think he'll get some minutes this season, tomorrow possibly. Tommy Doyle, it's just a weird one. I actually made a post about this on Instagram the other day. If you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me, Bias Man City fan. But yeah, my Instagram post was basically saying, what is going on with Tommy Doyle? Like, is he staying? Is he going? What's happening? I've seen absolutely no movement with him. Like, obviously, we've seen him rip it up for Sheffield last season. Both his granddads have played for City. So I'd love to see that. Imagine that family tradition carrying on. It'd be beautiful. But the reason I'm confused is because, look, we've not seen anything of him, really. He's not been on any benches. He didn't even travel to pre-season. I'm saying he didn't even travel to pre-season. So, look, if he's staying, Beautiful stuff, let him stay. But if he's not if he's not gonna play, if he's gonna be here and not play, just loan him out. Like when I've seen him play, he's been exciting. As I said, both his granddads play for City. There's a few reasons why I want him to have a successful career at City. But as I said, it's just a weird when he's not injured, at least I don't think so. Anyway, it's just I don't know, man. We'll see. Obviously, there's a week left of the transfer window. We'll see what goes on with him. THB as well. Taylor Howard Bennis, what's going on? What is going on? As I said, Manchester City have had a great start, a great start to the Premier League season. However, a team that's on the other end of that stick is Sheffield United. In their opening two games, they lost both of them. Realistically, when you look at the situation that both clubs are in and how both clubs are playing, this is a game where, on paper, we should absolutely batter Sheffield. Of course, football's not played on paper, it's played in grass. So, you know, it might not go that way, but look, I am confident, confident more than ever that City will get the job done tomorrow, of course. Come on. Right, so we'll talk about some important news that's come out ahead of the Sheffield game. Pep Guardiola has had surgery on his back. Get well soon, Pep. I love you. But yeah, what that does mean is he won't be there. He'll be watching the game in Barcelona while he rehabilitates. I can't say the word. While he rehabilitates. There we go. I'm leaving that in. I don't care. But yeah, as much as Pep has gone, do not fear. Lilo is here. The assistant coach will be taking over for this game. Personally, I don't give it Scott Carson. Could you imagine how funny that would have been if Scott Carson was managing City? I know, like, it's too important and obviously they wouldn't do it. I understand why they wouldn't do it. But surely with the quality we've got compared to Sheffield, no matter who was managing, realistically, as long as they've got a brain cell about them, would win this game. So with Scott Carson in charge, if we were to beat Sheffield, which, ah, that'd be a dream, that'd be mad. But look, this isn't the first time the assistant coaches had to manage instead of Pep Guardiola for a game. A couple of seasons ago, when Pep Guardiola had COVID, Rodolfo Borrell took over. He managed against Swindon, I think it was, in the FA Cup. We won that one 4-1. And look, see if you remember this one. Mikel Arteta took over for one game against Lyon. We lost 2-1, Nabil Fekir scored. Uh, who was the? I can't think of the other one. Yeah, we ended up losing that 2-1. However, believe it or not, that was actually the last Champions League home game that Manchester City have lost four years ago. Wow. Now I'm saying there's a record here. It's a fortress. It's a fortress, man. But anyway, I don't want to make this video too long. So let's talk about the injury news ahead of this game. As far as Manchester City's injury news, of course, Kevin De Bruyne's out. I'm going to end up saying this every single game. John Stones is out until after the international break. However, Bernardo! Silver, he's back fit to play. Silver, signed an extension. Silver, we won it in Istanbul. From the bottom of my heart, I apologise if you were in earphones there. You've had me screaming down your ear, but Bernardo's back. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. But look, I expect him to start. You know, it's his first game back since signing the new deal. 2026, Bernardo. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful stuff. New signing, Jeremy Doku, or Docs, as he said, likes to be called. Look, I think I'll stick to Jeremy. But look, I expect him to be part of the squad. I can't see him starting. I don't know if he's at a training session yet, but... I think it'll be part of the squad. As for the Sheffield United injury news, I've got a list here. Uh, Boggle, Boggle, that's an horrible name, isn't it? Boggle. Boggle, Brewstock, Kula, Barley, Fleck, Jebison and Mick Burner. How much that means for Sheffield? I don't know. I didn't watch enough of Sheffield last season. All I was keeping an eye out was McAtee and Doyle. But look, 
I mean, no injuries are good for the team, but yeah. Regardless, if they're a fully fit squad, I still expect City to turn them over. Especially, especially if they start this lineup. Edison in net, of course, a back three of Kyle Walker, Ruben Diaz, and Gavardio. That partnership of Gavardio and Diaz, wow. Immaculate, beautiful stuff. Rodri in the midfield alongside Calvin Phillips. Give him a chance. It's Sheffield. Give the man an opportunity. Let him fight for his position. You know, we're bringing in another midfielder as well now. Nunes, Eze, who knows? That's another midfielder as a competition. Give Calvin an opportunity. Give him time. I play him tomorrow. I play him. Further up the field, I say Kovacic had a great game against Newcastle. He's got a start. Bernardo Silva's back. He's fit. He's a must start. Either side of the wing, Jack Grealish and Phil Foden. I wouldn't start Doku just yet. It's a bit soon, isn't it? And then up front, I go with Erling Haaland. What this means for Julian Alvarez, I'm not too sure. I expect Alvarez to start, but I wouldn't drop Foden, Grealish or Bernardo. So Pep will do it. Whatever he decides to do, I'll back him. Oh, not Pep, shit, Lilo. <laughs> Whatever Lilo decides to do, I'll back him, right? He's the man. He's the man. But yeah, I don't know. I love Alvarez to pieces, though. I don't mind. We've got a good enough team. I expect, as I said, I've said it many times, and I'll be so angry if we don't. I expect City to turn over Sheffield. I'd like a few goals against them. I'd like a clean sheet against them. But the most important thing is that we get the three points. Let's keep winning, keep racking up the points, and let's make it four in a row. Come on. But anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Your early score predictions. What score prediction are you saying? I'm going to go with City 4, Sheffield 0. We'll get the job done. Bramwell Lane, we'll go there and we'll smash it. We'll smash it. So yeah, as I said, let us know your score predictions in the comments. Go follow me both on Instagram and TikTok. Fireman City fan is the name. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. A nice one.